Hi guys, Max here, and this is of course another daily market update, this time for yesterday, the 21st of July. And as you can see from this heat map behind me, it was actually relatively good. In particular, tech stocks performed okay while markets were actually open. The S&P 500 rose by about 1% for the day, and the Nasdaq rose by about 1.4%, with the Dow Jones doing just a little bit worse, rising by 0.5%. The only sector which really didn't perform brilliantly was consumer defensives was just a little bit weak, and energy stocks were down for the most part because oil prices fell once more. Across the rest of the world, it was a similar sort of story with stocks on the whole rising, but not by any kind of ridiculous uh, degree. The Americas were relatively strong, Europe was pretty strong too, and then Asia was strong as well. On the whole then, the MSCI World Index rose by 0.8% for the day. In currencies in the world of foreign exchange, we really didn't see much of a change at all. The dollar spot index fell very slightly by about 0.2%. The euro is still sitting at $1.02. The pound is still sitting at $1.20. And the yen is still sitting at 138 yen per dollar. Now, in fixed income assets, though, we actually did get some volatility with yields falling and not by a small amount. The US 10-year treasury yield fell by 12 basis points down to 2.9%. The German 10-year yield fell by 3 and the British 10-year yield fell by 9 basis points. Now, this was really due to a slight change in the behavior of the European Central Bank. We'll talk about exactly what happened in a moment, but basically they hiked interest rates by half a percent and that's just made investors a little bit more worried about the coming recession and so they're seeking a flight to safety and so they're moving into bonds, pushing yields down. In the world of crypto, we saw it behave once more as a risk on correlated assets. As tech stocks rose, crypto followed in that same direction. Bitcoin was up by about 2% and is sitting above $23,000, a very high level compared to where we were over the last month. Ethereum doing even better, sitting above $1,600, and most altcoins were moving in that same sort of range, up by 5 to 10% for the day, a relatively strong day for crypto. Now, was there some really strong news for crypto? Well, there was, but I don't think this is really indicative of the market as a whole. It's just nice to see a government actually act against some fraud and some scams in crypto. So what am I talking about? Well, I'm talking about the United States arresting a couple Coinbase employees on insider trading. Now, this is a first ever for cryptocurrency. Insider trading is illegal, of course, but for a long time, it's sort of been ignored regarding cryptocurrency and NFTs. Although about a month ago, we had the first arrest for insider trading of NFTs, and now we have the first arrest for insider trading of crypto. So what exactly happened? Well, a Coinbase employee knew which coins would be listed next on the site. He was one of about a group of 10 who had access to this information prior to it becoming public. And of course, when a coin gets listed on Coinbase, it gets a lot more attention. It's one of the biggest exchanges in the world. And so prices of these coins usually pump. He basically traded on this knowledge. He bought these coins, he tried to hide it, but the pseudo anonymity of cryptocurrency means that it's actually really difficult to hide it because of course this is a blockchain so every transaction is public. Now three individuals made about one and a half million dollars each. They then realized that they were going to get caught so they tried to flee the country but they got arrested at the airport and they now face up to 40 years in jail which is very good news in my opinion. The US attorney had this to say about it. Today's charges are a further reminder that Web3 is not a law-free zone. Just last month, I announced the first ever insider trading case involving NFTs. And today, I announced the first ever insider trading case involving cryptocurrency markets. Our message with these charges is clear. Fraud is fraud is fraud, whether it occurs on the blockchain or on Wall Street. And the Southern District of New York will continue to be relentless in, in bringing fraudsters to justice wherever we may find them. That's really nice to see. For far too long now, people have been getting off scot-free regarding these scams on crypto. Hopefully they move on to pump and dump scams as well because there are so many examples. The evidence is absolutely rife. And hopefully this is the start of the end of this ridiculous lawlessness of cryptocurrency. Now regarding the European Central Bank, as I mentioned earlier, we got news out from them that they are raising interest rates by 50 basis points from negative 5% to 0% while inflation is above 9% in most European countries. So it's not exactly them acting hawkish and they are still about a year behind the curve. Incredibly late, incredibly irresponsible, but it's still big news nonetheless because this is their first interest rate hike since 2011, which is about damn time. Now a 50 basis point hike is actually quite large, especially for a first one. The European Central Bank are claiming that this is front-loading to try and bring inflation down immediately and then to slow down in the future. So we're probably expecting 25 basis point rate hikes into the future. 
Now, why has it taken the ECB so long to finally act? Well, because there's a looming debt crisis and they can't cater to two separate mandates at the moment, especially when they work in completely different ways. The ECB has to cater to every euro country, which is obviously not an easy thing to do. And the problem is that half of them right now just want cheap debt, Italy in particular, so they don't want rate hikes. And then the other half just want prices to stop rising by ridiculous rates like 9% a year countries like Germany, and they do want rate hikes. So there's a little bit of conflict here, and basically no country is really happy with what the ECB is doing. Now to try and please the southern countries which need cheap debt, they're putting out a new bond buying scheme. The idea is pretty simple. You buy bonds, you force prices up, and you force yields down, and so debt gets a little bit cheaper. This is though quantitative easing just by another name, which is one of the major reasons we've seen such ridiculous levels of inflation over recent years. So this is, in my opinion, going to end absolutely awfully. I'm sure you won't be surprised to hear that. This could actually be the start of the end of the euro. There is a lot of conviction behind it and I doubt many uh, euro countries will be happy to abandon it and go back to their own currencies because for a long time the euro was very successful at promoting trade and cohabitation between lots of different European countries but it's at times like this when it's exposed as being really difficult to make work. Now the other big bit of news regarding macroeconomics was that we got new US jobless claims. They came out yesterday and we actually got some good news for once, which is going to sound weird because on the surface it's bad news. We had more jobless claims, there are more unemployed people and more people claiming uh, benefits or welfare, I think you call it in the US. Now the increase in the number of people claiming this stuff is the highest it's been since November last year, which is really nice. There's 251,000 more jobless claims this month than the last month. And this is likely due to a lot of the different job cuts that we've talked about over recent weeks. For example, all fan companies have announced that they're going to be hiring less people in the future. And then most other tech companies have announced that they're already firing people and they're going to continue firing people as well. Now this sounds awful, so why is it good news? Well, because it's a sign of the economy slowing and the only way to fight inflation at this point is to slow down the economy, really to slow it down to a crash into a recession. It's just a, it's just unfortunate, but this is the lesser of two evils at this point and this is bad for the economy, so it's good for future inflation. Finally then, there's been an awful lot made about Snapchat's earnings reports and what this means for the rest of the corporate environment as well. Now, in short, Snapchat had an absolutely awful earnings report and in after hours trading, their share price fell by 27%. That means that actually they're down 75% for 2022 so far, and they're down 84% from their all-time highs, which is absolutely insane. They've been performing awfully, and in this earnings report, they missed everything across the board. So what are the specific details? Well, they lost two cents per share, which was opposed to the expected one cents of profit per share. So that's not very good. They also missed their revenue expectations of $1.11 billion when they were expecting $1.14 billion. The only good news from this report was that their daily active users was up at 347 million compared to 344 million, which was expected. So far, this means that they are not seeing any revenue growth over the last year, which is awful for a tech company that's supposed to be predicated on the idea of growth for years forever. They also announced that they're not going to be putting forward any forward guidance for the next quarter, which is bad news because it shows they have no confidence in their ability to predict what's happening next and they don't want to disappoint investors. So this is bad news as well. To make matters worse, investors were expecting them to put forward forward guidance in the first place and they were expecting 18% growth in revenue over the next quarter, which is obviously not going to happen. It's then worth noting that actually this gets even worse because this is after they already changed their guidance for this quarter back in May, which already caused the share price of the company to drop by something like 25%. The company is going to be slowing down their hiring in the future and they're probably going to start laying off more staff too. Basically, this was absolutely awful for Snapchat. There was almost no good news at all. Now, the reason this is such big news for us, though, is because other tech companies have been hit by this impact as well. And why is that? Well, because Snapchat's advertising revenue was very weak and advertising is probably the second biggest, most profitable, most hyped up industry or market in the world right now, second only to cloud computing. 
If you look at companies like Google, Microsoft, and Facebook, they all make in excess of $10 billion per quarter in revenue. That's over 40 billion a year. That's absolutely massive amounts of money. The news that Snapchat is struggling with its advertising rates then is seen as a sort of a bellwether for this industry as a whole. And so a bunch of other companies saw their share prices drop after hours for the exact same reason that Snapchat's did. Facebook and Pinterest saw their share price fall by 5% on this news. Google fell by 3%, Twitter fell by 1.5%, and this was all on news surrounding Snapchat, not these individual companies themselves. Basically, people are worried that this is going to be a bad earnings report for tech companies in particular, for anyone who has advertising revenue, and people are seriously starting to get worried about the recession. Finally, the last thing for the day, I just wanna speak very simply, very quickly about that wretched woman, Nancy Pelosi, once more, the richest person on a $100,000 salary that the world has ever seen. Now, there have been so many accusations in recent years about her wealth, and everyone seems pretty sure that it comes from insider trading because she has access to ridiculous amounts of information, and then her husband somehow manages to be the best stock trader of all time. For example, her husband put massive bets on semiconductor and microchip companies over recent weeks prior to a vote that the US was going to have on favorable legislation for these microchip semiconductor companies. And then it came out that he was right, he bet correctly. And so people are obviously joining the dots. Nancy Pelosi likely had information as to how likely this bill, this legislation was to pass. And it's very easy to understand why people might think she might be monetarily incentivized to tell her husband what's going to happen. People are starting to ask questions though, and she really doesn't seem happy about this. So I leave you all with this short, quick clip here, just so you can make up your mind for yourself. Yes, sir. I think we have to go now. One more, he said. Yes, sir. Uh, over the course of your career, uh, has your husband ever made a stock purchase or sale based on information he's received? What are you saying? Uh, over the course of your career, has your husband ever made a stock purchase or sale based on information you received from you? No. Absolutely not. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. If you enjoyed this video, then make sure to like, comment, and subscribe to bless the YouTube algorithm. It really does help. If you want to join our exclusive community, then check out our Patreon. You get access to our Discord server and extra content like access to my portfolio and buy and sell alerts for all my own investments. Also, make sure to check out the link in the description to Masterworks. It can help you protect your portfolio against market turmoil through fractional shares of art from world-famous artists. Art has historically proven to be uncorrelated to the markets, so it's a really valuable resource with the markets falling every week. There's also a link in the description to iTrust Capital, which helps you to invest in crypto through your tax-advantaged IRA, which could literally save you thousands. If you, like me, think crypto going down is a buy-in opportunity, then now is the perfect time to join iTrust Capital. Thank you all for watching. Stay stoic. Until next time.